Welcome back to another episode of Black Girls Texting. It's your girl, Shari. Hey, bitches. It's your girl, Charles Pinky. I didn't know we were singing and I'm not prepared. It's Gwen. Oh, I kind of said it. <laughs> that was melodic. Welcome back to another episode of Black Girls Texting. Glenn and Shade here. We ran into someone who said that they love the solos. So we're just going to keep them going. Am I just chopped liver? Did I not just say your name? You said Glenn no. and Shade here. Oh my God. Sorry. Glenn, <laughs> Chelsea, and Shade here. In my brain, it's like I'm already here, obviously. So then I was just. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. It's, it's okay. I'm a mother, okay? I'm a mother today. <laughs> oh, my mom call. brain. I have mom brain. I have mom brain, so I sincerely apologize. Chels Pinky's obviously here. I think those are um, the Bottega dupes, but we can get into are that Are they later. the Bottegas? Yeah, they are. Right, 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 right. I thought you just played me. They from the US launch, I mean, if you want to just drop $1,000 on earrings, yeah. that's your business, but... Anyways, as I was saying, we ran into a listener. We'll talk more about that. And they said they love when it's just us. So you're going to get lots of just us. And we're going to get into it. Not your market research is one listener. <laughs> yeah, that's enough. That's, that will suffice. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to, to jump in? Glenn? Sure. <laughs> okay, I can go. Um, so I'm still watching Love Island. Um, I just got, I know listeners, the show's over, but not for me, um, even though I know what happens. Whitney, I was shocked by her behavior. Oh, in what way? Her fight with Ella? Mm. I was like, clearly you're upset that they called you smug. But you also said that they're the most attention-seeking couple. So, like, you can't take it that personally. She's like, if I'm your best mate in the house, how are you going to call me smug and call me out in a challenge? Da, 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 da. I'm like, but you did the exact same thing. And then I got some insider scoop because I posted on our Instagram. I've been posting my TV watching experience. And someone was like, yeah, it was total bullshit. And actually, there was this whole... I don't know how she knew this, but she was saying that Whitney and Kat always took the longest to get dressed. So they always showered first, like they took mm -hmm. the longest to get ready. And so for her to flip out on Ella as if she always showered first was just not true. Out of pocket. Mm. Yeah. And it, it really, it kind of reminded me of, obviously everyone's human, right? You handle conflicts incorrectly sometimes and like look back and you're like, mm, I could have handled that a lot better but like i don't know when like you get into a fight and then it's just like yeah and you always do this and you always do that i'm like damn were you thinking that the whole time that, and that's what mm -hmm. ella said too she's like mm -hmm. well and that's we're not friends right like you've been bad minding me the whole this whole time so i was shocked and saddened by that um but yeah, I'm watching the show. I have opinions on all the people. Mitch is a bitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Messy Mitch, the bitch. Messy Mitch. What do you think about Sammy? So initially, I did not like Sammy. And Sammy's growing on me, to be honest. He's growing on me. He wanted to play around. He had a lot of tests. And I think it's a seems test he, Yeah, it seems he's really into Jess now. And he's putting all his eggs in that basket. I guess probably there's no more bombshells coming, I assume. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I I have grown to like Sammy. He's funny. I yeah. don't trust him. I don't trust him. Still? Mm. I mean, I think what he just... What episode are you on, Glenn? I've, I'm done. I finished today. Oh, right, right, Finally. right, 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 right. I made it to the end. But I just, I don't like the way he moved. He didn't need those tests. He just wanted to, like, have a good time. And he knew she was just going to be sitting there waiting for him. And then once he got all that shit out of his system, he was like, all right, let me go get with the girl that I know is going to ride for me, which I think is whack. 
I also agree it's whack, like in a real world context. But mm-hmm. I do think on the show, it's like we feel like they're in these relationships and they've like only known each other for two weeks. Do you know Fair. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So Fair. like to close yourself off to someone who someone else who comes in who actually could potential potentially be like a better match i don't really see anything wrong with that in the context of the show he was picking some really random people though i'm like what he was very child (laughs) yeah just that's what he gave yeah i wasn't mad at him but i see why people were not feeling him right Mm -hmm. yeah and i'm i'm at this point in the show at least i'm a huge fan of ella Like, I think she's very good at communicating. And I kind of admire how she's just like, okay, this bothered me. I'm going to tell you. But, like, she does it, like, with love. Like, she's not Mm -hmm. mean about it. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Um, Yeah, so I really like her. Um, And, yeah, the show is I'm entertained. It took a while, right? We talked about that. It took a while for it to pick up. It was a slow burn. It's a slow Slow burner. Slow burn. Yeah, well, hopefully it'll be done by the next time we talk. Yes. And we can talk about Um, it more. Yeah. And then I guess I'll stay on my TV thing unless something else comes up. But this is a solo, so whatever. Tangential. Um, Beef. I watched that. And it was so good. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm like, you watched it, right, Shadi? Is there a new season? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, no, I'm late. I Honestly, so obviously, guys, I'm in L.A. and we had a hurricane. It was actually just one day of rain. Um, <laughs> yeah, it like wasn't a big deal at all. But I did experience my first earthquake mm. um, in California. And my fiance was in the shower and I was in the living room. And it felt like people were like throwing bowling balls above us. Oh, shit. And I was like what is going on and then my phone started like squealing because it was like earthquake warning cover your head and i was like Mm -hmm. oh this is an earthquake so i'm like yelling out to him and he's like what and i'm like did you not feel that and he was like what are you talking about and then he came out and i was like there was a fucking earthquake and he said he didn't feel anything (laughs) my friend was in ohio and he said his house felt like it was like collapsing it looked but like did anything intense, like fall but everything was fine like trees fell down yeah. but like they were fine oh because it was yeah, closest okay. over there right yeah that, i think yeah. that's where it was crazy which is wild that like something there i could feel because like the aftershocks all like the way two hours for me yeah. yeah in la yeah damn um but yeah basically it was kind of like a snow day because they were kind of freaking everyone out about the hurricane yeah and the la people were just like oh la di da la nothing 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 and i was like okay i've lived through sandy so i know a hurricane can come and fuck shit up um maybe we should be taking this a little bit more seriously i called all my friends half of them didn't even know that there was a hurricane <laughs> coming i told them get canned goods mm-hmm. taylor was getting fucking frozen meals i was like girl what if the power goes out get canned goods so <laughs> We were like doomsday <laughs> prepping over here. Um, but actually, it was just oh, some rain. Oh, that's why you need canned goods, because you can't cook anything. Yeah, I mean, like, if you're, if the and power you goes out, it. you can't, yeah, you can't really eat frozen shit. Or but what about microwave it? Will your gas stove work? You've got to just eat cold, room I mean, to shit out of can. I'd rather not starve to death and eat some corn out of the can. Correct. Does power outage impact? Gas stove. Okay, also, I don't gas. A, uh, interesting question, but I think that it does somehow. I have an electric. It's, it's going to sound so. super dumb, but like you have to plug in your stove. Oh, so, during a power yeah, outage, sure gas can flow to the burner, but the burner can't make the spark to light. So you would have to like light it with a lighter. Oh, okay. Mm. With a match, if you no, have a gas like, stove, but like, most that's why everyone gets canned food because they can't eat. But so I, I was just having a blonde moment. No, but, but people with okay. the yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess you get like a, um, a portable little burner anyway. I don't know, child. Canned goods though, they recommend canned goods. Yeah, but most new places they don't have gas stoves. They're doing electric. Yeah, electric. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like every new place we saw, the stove was electric, even though, whatever. Anyway, so it was nothing, but it was fun. It was like a snow day. Everyone was in their house. Um, mm, too bad we don't have the Patreon because I got to tell you all <laughs> something. But um, we can make yeah. assumptions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Is there a lingerie brand that people love? I keep asking and no one tells me. Uh, Agent Provocateur or La Perla. <laughs> Why are you rolling your eyes? Those are the lingerie brands. I know, but like, duh. Like, those have been around for like 20 years. Like, my mom would say La Perla. I mean, like, what are the gir- like what are the girls? Like, what's the... The, the Gen Z broke people? They're not buying lingerie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. have to like do a, a survey. And for like no, brands, those are like, the brands. Asian provocateur does not have sizes. Maiden form? <laughs> Girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm maybe gonna love a maiden I don't form know. Job. Yeah, just I'm be naked. Make a pole. Right. It just pop out in a G string. Never fails. Or buy those little uh, nipple tassels and swing them. <laughs> okay. Well, moving on. Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can go. I guess I have. This is just super random. I, I, I'm not compl- very passionate about this, but Hot Off the Press Fresh and Fit podcast is probably officially coming to a close. Period. They've been officially Sorry, demonetized me... by YouTube. And um, who is that? I, the people that say awful, people. disgusting things about black women. Those two guys. Oh, the what one who looked kind of like Habisha. Yes, right. he mm-hmm. seems to have gotten mm-hmm. a hair transplant. It's hilarious. I'm sure. <laughs> um, apparently, also the place where they record doesn't want them to record there anymore, and they're like, I don't know why anybody would do this to us. We're literally helping people. You guys message us every day that you almost wanted to, like, you know, we saved your life. Your girlfriend is making you sandwiches now. I said, what? <laughs> helping incels. Literally. It's crazy. It's hilarious, actually. If you, <laughs> Oh, maybe we'll insert like- the clip. It's just the most dramatic insert walk the off. Yeah, insert clip. It is hilarious. Um, so oh, yeah, they goodbye were the to them and good who, riddance. Wasn't there a big scandal with them last year? Yeah, like they're, they're always just saying problematic shit. Like, oh, nobody wants a dark skinned girl. Yes, or like, they said something like that. Yeah. yeah, but it was like a whole big thing. Okay, they kept they kept mm-hmm. having moments last year. It was like back to back the back shit. I didn't yeah. even realize that they still. That's existed. how they became big. Yep. Um, so bye mm-mm, to those hoes. Um, I'm also going to reply to this article in the Times that was about um, like women in hip hop and women in hip hop are like saving rap as a genre. Kind of the article mm. makes the argument. So um, I'm just going to read a couple like sections from it. The sub headline is. Um, as their male counterparts turn depressive and paranoid, it's the women who are having all the fun. Like American men in general, our top male rappers appear to be in crisis, overwhelmed, confused, struggling to embody so many contradictory ideals. As a result, the art is suffering too. If the music were any more ex- existentially morose or stylistically comatose, mainstream hip hop made by men might be headed the way of hair metal or disco. The narcoticized indolence is everywhere. The the recounting mm. of opioid abuse is so blasé, the perks, zans, and oxys that these pillbox litanies leave you wondering if the Sackler family sponsored a wing in the rap museum. And then there's the sense of the foreshortened future that's baked into the genre, but has been amplified as gangster rap branched off into trap, drill, and other grittier subgenres. Uh, I'll keep going. Many of the male rappers are documenting social strife and commenting on the violence that comes with being young, black, and famous. This thread can be moving and also heartbreaking. When listening to these songs, it's impossible not to ache for their makers, but to be afraid right along with them. Um, So it kind of just goes on to make that point and to say that like women in rap are keeping things light, fun, flashy, braggadocious, 
like all the elements that we've become used to in hip hop. And I do think it's important to ha- like for people to have a vehicle to express like real feelings and emotions and like that, you know, that, that definitely has a place in music. Um, but it is interesting when you look at like the music that people want to listen to the most, the shit that's going to get people dancing and excited and having a good time when it comes to hip hop, it's like women and only a few yeah. years ago, we didn't even imagine that there would be that women women would be at the top of their game in hip hop. We still were just like, it's Nicki, it's and then beyond that, it's Foxy and Kim, and now we have so many women in hip hop that are um, exciting. And I'm not gonna even front. I was tempted to not engage in like the sexy red hype of it all. But I listened to the album and it actually fucking slaps. So if you haven't listened to oh. Hood's Hottest Princess, it's really good. Okay, go ahead, Chelsea. I why? do not endorse that. It's disgusting. I, I didn't listen to the full album, but what I have heard of Sexy Red. Okay, if you're uh, 18 or older, your ears can do whatever they want. But I don't want. I don't want girls listening to no Sexy Red. And I heard Are she's coming out with a lip. Are young girls listening to Sexy Red? Of course. Yeah, they mm. are. I think she went to a school. Just like you were. Like to visit a school. And she went to a school because she was giving out a scholarship. Yeah, she's also. But they know who she tell is. Tell me if this is incorrect. But what I heard. Yeah, of course they know who she Yeah, they know who she is. She's coming out with a lip gloss line. And the clear is called Come. The, mm. the, the names of all the stuff are crazy. Apparently she has a, like a, a shade called Chlamydia. <laughs> like, oh. mm-hmm. she also yeah. went on an interview to say that she is the queen of raw dogging oh yeah oh. in a world where you know pregnancy disease yeah people are really impressionable i'm a sexy red fan if she's raw dogging then i can raw dog and yes men have been saying it for years but i also don't think that that is an excuse now for a woman to be promoting that no, I totally hear you. And that's why I think I was hesitant mm. to really like engage in the music. And I have this group chat with a couple of like my white gay male friends and they go up for her so much. And part of me was kind of like, why y'all going that's up for this? Cringy. Like, I feel I feel conflicted about this. And like she I, she and I identify the same way. Like you are on the outside looking in and can like kind of like laugh and you're entertained by this yeah you know what i mean however then when i did listen to the music i actually liked it and i think that they actually were like no the music like the music's actually good um i think a lot of the things she does are for shock value but there are songs on the album that are like genuinely like well produced um but i i hear you like i do have complicated feelings about her as an artist Again, I think a lot of it's for show. There's performance. There's shock value. I think she's having mm-hmm. fun. I think she's trolling sometimes. But there are people that are going to take it seriously. Um, and then it could be detrimental. Yeah. But is that her responsibility? I mean, that you could say that like with any artist that's going out. And, right. you know, I feel like that's the age old argument is that their responsibility. But I do think the black community is already struggling with so many things. Why put more poison into it? Mm-hmm. Like, I think you can be fun. Like I'm twerking, da, 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 da. But then I think it crosses a line when you're making lip gloss that <laughs> little girls are going to buy come and chlamydia. And you're saying you don't like condoms. You're the raw dog queen. I think that's a little, you're, you're going far. I mean, having I a know. line of lip gloss with that name is just like dumb. That's just dumb. Well, because no, people to, don't buy it. To Glenn's the point, open. I feel like she does do things for shock value. And like that's kind of like her her brand. And so while yes, like she is a rapper, I feel like she's like a character. Right. Like it goes beyond her just being like, oh, I just want to rap. Like it's like this whole big thing. So I'm like, oh, yeah, like if she toned it down, but like that just isn't her whole like her whole thing is that it's so crazy like my other thought is like is she a character or is she a representation of like a real like it that's a real person that is like that i think it's a little bit of both i think she like i mean i don't know her obviously but i yeah. think she like 
has had some wild experiences and kind of takes it and hams it up. Like, Mm -hmm. did you guys Mm -hmm. see she did that interview with that? I can't, I don't, can't remember the man's name, but he always does these like awkward interviews where he like oh, yeah. says strange things. Yeah. To the Marco. Oh. And Funny she's Marco. like, Oh, hold on. She was like, My nigga calling me and it's a man in prison. And then she's like, Hold on, it's my other nigga and it's another man in prison. And he's like terrified. But I don't know if that's a character. Like, you know, people like that exist, right? No, maybe not in our circles. No, I know she's dead ass serious and like this mm-hmm. is dead ass a part of her life. And I feel like she hams it up in the the lyrics and like the way she just is like like she gets on stage when she's doing her sound check and her bonnet and her nightgown because she's just like fuck it whatever we're just gonna and I, I, I feel like there's something like partially liberating about that but I, I do understand your concern and like what's happening in the community I'm just like oh like yes we should be good but then I love that there's like that side of the spectrum like maybe she just needs to have like hard lines on like where her stuff is played i don't know maybe right it's that it kind of reminds me of zeus like i mm. can watch jocelyn's cabaret yes. with another black person now why did Would you make that accent bitch? in my life huh no the accent what did I say? jocelyn's cabaret oh because <laughs> that's how you say it um but would i ever watch that with a white person or would i ever want a white person to access it like i actually think that that channel or streaming platform should have a scanning device where they have to determine whether or not you are a person of color and you are allowed to watch that because the fact that white people have access to those stripper ladies punching each other and exposing breasts and just behaving in that way freaks me out (laughs) she She's at a loss for words. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. Like I can be entertained by it because I understand not all black people are like that. And like mm-hmm. I can, you know, contextualize things, but like I don't know. I, I, and then I, know I also feel like when I watch it, politics, it's a lot of Exactly. Stuff. That I think about that. And I also think about the fact that when watching Jocelyn's Cabaret, Jocelyn's Cabaret people are like aware of the fact that they're on TV so they're doing the most and people will embarrass themselves on TV no matter who they are for attention but I, I know what you mean though and I and I felt the same way when like I had some white friends telling me that they love sexy red like I had that same kind of like ooh um, like where is this coming from like wh- where it's more like where is your intrigue in this coming from if you're standing it as well um, right why you don't but, like common <laughs> Child. Not he's I not mean, the best example of a good person. I, I don't listen to the comment like, either. I'd rather listen to sexy red. <laughs> yeah, but we black. We are allowed to dibble and dabble in the ratchet. Um, why mm-hmm. are white people doing it? Like, why do you want to see us represented in that way? Why does hmm. that entertain you? Like that sort of cooning and buffooning. Mm. Mm. That mm-hmm. kind of freaks me out. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna hop off of both the things you said when Glenn finishes her, her well, yeah, wait, can I, mean, I say I'm, one I'm thing real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Cause you were talking about the, um, the article in the New York times mm-hmm. and that reminded me of something that I actually saved. So I'll just bring it up now. Um, R29 unbothered. God, they me. were talking about that Netflix special. Have you seen oh, the Netflix yeah. special about the female rappers? Mm-hmm. Yes. But they like left mad people out. Um, well, they said the back, apparently there's backlash to the Netflix special and the Mm -hmm. title reads the back, the backlash to the Netflix doc ladies first proves massage noir is alive and well in hip hop. Um, it goes on to say, as usual, black women are and have always blazed a trail in hip hop, but as creators of the culture, black women, some black women, what? As creators of the culture, this is a typo, black women, someone still don't need to get <laughs> recognized, deserve. What the fuck? They need a, um, an editor on this website. But um, the backlash to Netflix documentary, Ladies First, a story of women in hip hop is not surprising, but it is disappointing. It goes without saying that Ladies First, a story of women in hip hop, is reflecting what black women in hip hop are experiencing today and what they have always experienced. The ability to love and champion a culture that doesn't always love us back, 
even though without women, the culture wouldn't even exist. We as black folks are trying to be in this space of black joy and trying to celebrate and not always bring the pain and the trauma. So kind of what you were saying, Glenn. Right. Um, Dream Hampton says to Unbothered. But the erasure of that is what keeps it stunted. But also, why do black women have to just talk about twerking an ass? Yeah. I mean... I mean it, we have other fun. shit we deal with. Right. Yeah, but if it's like music that's like joyous for the club to go out, and we're not saying that that's all that rap has to be, right? But if it is that, typically like that's what you would turn up to and even glenn there's a doesn't sexy red have a, a song called like my sexy walk and you were like this is a song to boost your confidence yes 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 i'm, I'm gonna like, listen this to is the album empowering. i'm gonna listen to the album Give it a maybe listen. on my headphones yeah. i listened to it at the gym and i was like who but then i was like doing my squats and i was like okay uh-huh uh-huh. Yeah. It gets you. It gets you. You know, about? there are definitely moments that make you like go like, oh, like I definitely I clutch, clutch my own pearls a little Clutching bit. Clutching my pearls. Pearls, yes. But um it's, it's yeah. fun. But yeah. I don't know. It's interesting in that article how they said like if rap kept being going in the di- gener- the the direction that it's going in now, based on like the men in hip hop that are very popular, that we could see hip hop's demise. Like that's crazy to me. That it would start to just be like I don't know. Like, I think I heard that um, uh, the Pink Tape, what's the boy's name, uh, mm-hmm. album called? The Pink Tape, um, what's his name? Are you talking about? Not the Pink Tape, no. <laughs> That's Nikki. I was like, Nikki Minaj album? is coming Yeah, out? I was like. The Pink Album, Lil Uzi, I think it's called like the Pink Album. Did oh. I make that up? I don't Child, know if it's called I the Pink know. Album. Um, I between the Pink I'll Album, if I'm not incorrect hold on i'm about to tell you right now pink tape making shit up pink tape okay oh pink tape pink tape Mm. and um travis scott's album were like the first two albums or songs from those albums that have gone like have gotten to the top of the charts this whole year there have been no other like hip-hop rap songs so people are like is is there a trend where by men hip-hop rap are not by in general of the genre Oh. They have gone like number one and number two. Um, I mean, hmm. I honestly yeah, I feel know. like most new music is trash. Fair enough. I don't can't, can't argue I that. Know. I mean, obviously there are some good bops, but like thinking about new music, like what's the classic? Like what's the new classic? I can't really think of. Like I listened to it for like a year. You know? Right. Then I don't What's really the thing that's coming out it. that you're like, oh, I have to come back to this. Like, I know I will always come back to this. Right. I don't know that I have anything like that right yeah. now. I, you have to do the work. You have to, like, find the new artists and, like, take your time and listen. It's not, but they're not getting the, like, airtime, I don't think. Yeah, there was that was another thing I was seeing. I didn't save it, but it was, like, some record exec was saying, like, finding new artists now that aren't one hit wonders is like really tough to like develop hmm. an artist um they were like uh, people like olivia rodrigo and ice spice have really been able to break through that um mm-hmm. but other than that usually people come out with like two songs now and mm. then you don't see them again in terms of like a new artist yeah i'll be interested to see what's happening with all these new women in hip-hop to this same conversation that are coming out like even Sexy Red, will we be talking about her next year? I don't know, maybe. Cause I feel like I haven't heard much about Glorilla. About who? No. And everybody was Damn. on her. About Glorilla? Glorilla? Glorilla. Yeah, I know. I've been wondering what happened to her too. Um, and now, have you heard Stunner Girls song yeah. with JT? That's crazy, to me. Wait, she had beef with JT? No, they have a song together. Oh. Oh. Didn't even hear it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stunner Girl, speaking of Zeus. Oh. That's crazy. I did hear about that, but oh. I didn't listen to it. Was it good? Kind of. If you know better, you would have did better. Something, something, something in my pussy wetter. 
Wetter. Oh, Glorilla is on the remix? No, JT is on the remix of Stunner Girl song. Stunner Girl is from Baddies on Zeus. What does that have to do with Glorilla? Nothing. I'm not talking about her no more. I'm talking about who's going to sustain and that people are just popping up. Like, so many people keep getting songs. Okay. And now we have Stunner Girl. I never saw that one coming. (laughs) I just feel old having this conversation. (laughs) Wait, can I play one thing? This comedian Mm -hmm. had an opinion about the sexy red stuff. Wait. I don't agree. This song should not have been scrutinized the way it was because if you listen to the lyrics, it's not even bad. It's different, way worse songs. Like Cardi B Wop. I remember my daughter listening to this Jason Aldean tried it in a small town, then Cardi B Wop or that new song where she'd be like thugging with my rounds, my pink, my old brown. When y'all are when y'all are making it seem okay for our daughters uh, to be thoughts. We are normalizing top behavior and over-sexualizing children with all these music videos. Think about that. Oh. You try to scrutinize Jason Aldean's song. Not oh, Jason Aldean. Jason Aldean. That's, that's, that's where he, he just lost in me. A small small town. Damn, lost me, lost me, lost me. What? Where the fuck did that come from? Okay, <laughs> yeah. is it my turn yet? It's your turn, child. <sighs> this is great. You guys set me up really nicely. Thanks for the alley-oop. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know if this is a red a reply. I think this is just a thought. I'm a mother this week, and by this week I mean two days. I'm babysitting <laughs> my niece, and just being she's seven, she's with her friend who's like ten, and being around her, I'm just like, where do you all hear these things and find these things and I understand that it's just life and like other kids hear things and it's on TV and it's they're using all these different apps and they're on YouTube, but it's really wild. And it makes me pull back and be like, am I like going too hard or am I like not doing enough when it comes to some of the stuff she'll say? Because I'm like, what is happening? So far, we have had a conversation around teen pregnancy Really? To which How she did that said, come up? because she said that her grandma was a teen mom. Oh. She had her dad when she was 19. <laughs> oh, technically. <laughs> so I'm over here like, I'm over here thinking she's, she's talking about 13 year olds. Pregnant. I'm like, right. And then exactly. How do you explain that to a seven? And then I'm like, well, yeah, yes, it is a teen pregnancy, but it's not like, you know, the girl in the eighth grade type thing. Um, we talked about hot girl summer. Mm. Which she heard on a TV show. What and show? What TV show? That's, right. That's what, what I'm not was understanding. She that they said hot girl. I know. And see, that's She's, my point. She probably listened to um Sexy Red too. <laughs> she knows who Ice but Spice on, is, which freaked TikTok. me out a little bit. If she's on TikTok mm. or YouTube, well, she's yeah. on Cap. The kids can also use Cap Cut. What the hell is CapCut? Well, CapCut Cap Cut used to the edit. They used to edit TikTok videos. I mean, so I but guess like the TikTok the sounds are all there. be on there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what did she say about Ice Spice? Well, in Roblox, people will make Roblox characters of Ice Spice. Yeah. <sighs> did you ask her if she thinks Ice Spice is black? I did, and she said she she's mixed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have thoughts on that too. Put a pin in it. So, race. so um her and this other little girl were like she's mixed and i was like okay um and then she was like i can get sturdy and started kind of like dropping it like pop lock and dropping down and my boyfriend was like whoa 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 whoa, whoa chill 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 and then i was like no you chill because she's a child She's not busting it wide open. She's literally thinks she's getting sturdy. And so mm-hmm. like it's like this weird place of like the adultification of kids, which we've talked mm-hmm. about many times and like letting kids mm-hmm. be kids. But also there's a fine line because these kids are grown as hell. Right. She obviously saw that in a not so kid. Well, she said the space. kids at school get sturdy, quote unquote, and they you know what you know in pop lock and drop it when the first drop you like boop, like you open your arms and drop. She said that was getting sturdy. No, girl. Yes, you're you know saying. Know how to she get saw sturdy. that in an adult context. 
or her friend did. They're not doing that on Sesame Street. Even Gracie's Corner, they're not. No, 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 no. Right, right, right. And I mean, yeah, the fact, even knowing that dance and knowing that stuff. And then she's on the phone with her friends talking about da 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 is sus. This is cringe. I was mad. This I was like, she says cringe all the time. Cringe, and she says like that's really not my aesthetic. (laughs) Yes, that's kind of. So I really don't know. I really don't know. And then I'm and then I'm internally like, I don't want daughters. I don't want daughters. It's too much. It's too much. But then I have to be like, are you being weird? Like, am like to myself, am I being weird? And even that man being like, you're raising your girls to be thoughts and sluts. And it's like, who raises someone to be a thought and a slut? Mm. Well, I believe yeah, I don't know. what you do in the house, you're probably doing worse in the street. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Not your niece. She's still little. But like I've been out and I've seen a bunch of teenage little girls with a camera set up and they're all bent over and I'm confused. And they're oh, obviously seen a that, TikTok actually. or a video right. and they think that that's normal. Mm. Like I'm all for like move your body, like explore your body movements, but there's a way to do it. When you're a child. Mm-hmm. I guess it's also like, what does it mean to be a thought or a slut? Like, where's the fine line where, but like, before it's like, like, are we in this lady in the streets, freaking the sheets mode? Are we like, you're supposed to be all there covered be up? No, sheets. no, I'm talking, no, sorry. I'm talking about like, once they get to a, a grown age, because I'm like, you're talking about raising thoughts, but y'all be the first ones wanting to fuck a thought. So I'm mm-hmm. so confused. Yeah, like, they do. Where's the disconnect? So it's like, is it this expectation that the the children are nuns and the and then the young girls are nuns and the young women are nuns and then they get married and then all of a sudden they're these like crazy freaks with just their man? Like, what are women supposed to do? Oh, do you mean like when should they start exploring their sexuality and like that? Yeah, and them? like what is the fine line of you saying that someone is a th- a thought or a slut? Like, mm. if women are told to be so demure is that all they can be they can't talk about sex they can't like be show off their bodies they can't be promiscuous like and we have these conversations right this is just like in the Mm -hmm. cultural zeitgeist but the more and more i think about it from like child age of like whoa whoa that's too grown don't do that to then like all of a sudden you do get grown you do get grown yeah. What are we allowed to do or like what's acceptable? Like we hung out with Leslie this weekend um, from Black Beauty Collective. Um, shout outs to her. We were in Chicago and we were talking about like teenagers dating. And at first I was like, oh, no, no, absolutely not. But then I was like, I guess, yeah, like 16, 17. If you like have your permission from your parents and all that stuff, I guess that's fine. Right. Well, what did you guys think about that? Um, and just like that scene, did mm-hmm. we already talk about it? I was gonna bring that up too. We I did can't on remember the show. which scene. Um, when Charlotte's daughter comes. Oh, spoiler yes. alert! Charlotte's daughter comes home and she's like, um, "Mom, Dad, I want to lose my virginity." Mm-hmm, and from what mm-hmm. I recall, Charlotte's daughter is like maybe like a senior or junior in high school. Seems mm-hmm. like she has her shit together. She's gonna get into a fabulous college, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and she's like, yeah, I've been with this boy like all year and like we're re- we care about each other and we're really ready to have sex and lose our virginity mm. together. So then Charlotte's obviously initially shocked and then she has a conversation with her daughter and she's like, OK, well, if you feel like you're ready and you want to talk to me about it, like I'm here, you know, kind of to open up that line of communication. So it's better she t- comes to her mom versus a friend. But then it gets taken up a notch when there's a snowstorm and the daughter is with the boyfriend and it's the night where they're getting ready to lose their virginity to each other, but he doesn't have condoms. And she calls home to Charlotte and is like, mom, he doesn't have condoms. And he's afraid that if we go downstairs to the store to get condoms, the store clerk is going to tell his mom, can you bring us condoms? Would you guys go get the condoms for your child? And then Charlotte's like, no, I'm not your fucking condom getter. I'm not getting your condoms. Right. And then she says they're going to pull out. And she's like, okay, mom, um, we'll 
I've done the research and the pullout method is 80%, you know, work. So we'll do that. Hey, that I thought that was very manipulative, but teenagers are demonic and terrible. See, I don't know and then I'm this is my own problem because I'm like, I'm not having daughters, so I don't care. But then I'm like, if my sons are just fucking all the girls, who cares? Yeah, it doesn't That's matter. Problematic. Daughters or sons. Yeah. Wait, Je Glenn, you're not going to get the condoms? No, I'm like, I, in that specific scenario, like, damn, I'm going to get up and go get the damn condoms in the snow. Like, can y'all try again another time? But they're going to do it anyway, right? So I want to make sure they're safe. I think in my household, I would have condoms available. Like, when I lost my virginity, the, the person I lost my virginity to, their brother gave them condoms. It wasn't their parent, but they had, like, an older brother in the house that was, like, old, like he was probably, like, our age. Um, like strap up <laughs> yeah like and that's a real thing you know, your boxing gloves <laughs> that's a real thing um I, I you know there, there's a high chance that the teenager is going to do it anyway so i like that in this scenario charlotte's daughter was open with her but i can't lie that shit would make me uncomfortable you know yeah i was recently on a baby moon and we were having a lot of conversations about like parenting scenarios like what we would do and i was the only one that said i would get the condoms everyone else was like fuck that i'm not getting no condoms and i was like well what if she fucking gets pregnant or gets a disease right. Right. yeah because she's gonna do it anyways she's gonna do yeah. it and at least she came to me you know what yeah. no the part that i that i also got stuck on was that he was afraid that the, that the store clerk was gonna tell his mom so like now charlotte is like facilitating their shit when he doesn't want to be true. open with his mom that there's a um conflict there like, but you... also i'm not in charge of his relationship with his mom i'm in charge of my relationship with no, my but daughter imagine but the then mom it's like, y'all not calls... supposed to be fucking so bring your ass home no imagine yeah. the boy's mom calls charlotte like i heard that you're buying condoms for my son like, yeah i'm not buying condoms bad. for your son i bought them for my daughter fair facts it, the, I, and I agree, you left Glenn. the house empty for them to fuck. Um, is is that? No, yeah, they were no, at the no. boys' house. I know, oh. but just because the the house is open, if I told you you are not supposed to be having sex right now, you're not supposed to be having sex. And yeah, and, I, and I agree that that if the Can't young man's food. like the rules in his home are that he's not supposed to be having sex, then like y'all not doing this. Now, if y'all really want to sneak and get wild, then that, that's your business. But yeah, now I don't want to be in the middle of it because now I'm, to your point, Glenn, like facilitating something that's not supposed to be happening. But what I was going to say is if both, let's say they're 16, 17, they say they're, they want to do it. Would you like meet with the other parents to be like, okay, so like our kids say they're having sex this weekend. Like, let's talk about it. Yeah, I would do that. I, I it depends on the relationship with the other parent. Or at least give a give them a call, you know, like, listen, my daughter's saying this. I don't know what y'all have talked about in your household. Just like make everything clear. But then what if the. I mean, I guess. Yeah, because I feel like then the kid is going to be like their parent is going to be like, you can't fucking see that little whore. And then oh. my kid is going to be like, mom, literally, I'm never telling you anything again. And that's the end of our communicative relationship. Well, no, for me, it's understanding that like this is a mutual thing and both parents are OK with it. And in a dream mm -hmm. world, but most likely a... it's not going to be that the case. Most likely, like most parents that I am aware of, they're One's not okay like, and yeah, one isn't. sure. Go ahead and have sex. Just use a condom. Mm -hmm. Remember, sex ed was completely about abstinence. Yeah, mm -hmm. what but I feel like want. that's going to be different with our generation. Like, I mean, like us now is like if, when we become parents, I think it'll look very different. I think it depends on the on the parent, because like I said, on this honeymoon, oh, a, right. lot a lot of, of people, people were no. saying, no, like you shouldn't be fucking having sex anywhere. And I'm not going to make it easy for you. Like have sex when you have your own place to have sex. You don't but have then, sex in my house or there. Oh, child, ain't nobody doing no, but that. You but find then I book are they allowed to have girlfriends and school. boyfriends? People used to book hotel rooms, you said? I did, yes. Oh, you got money. So I had places to fuck. A dead side brat. On yeah, Groupon, wow. girl. Groupon bookings. 
Not Groupon. But wait, Groupon with, were they comfortable with the kids having being boyfriend and girlfriend in high school? Um, I think so. Because if you but did I think that, everyone assumes it's like cutesy, like, oh, they're hug- holding Not hands. when their hormones are probably at like raging high and that's like when everything is happening to their bodies. Well, you guys know the story of when I was supposed to go to <clears throat> Packer prom and the after party is always like someone's house in the Hamptons and everyone leaves the prom. And my boyfriend at the time, his father literally called my mother like, begging her to let me go to this after party no. and my mother was like you have a cock and i have a hen she's <laughs> not going and oh, my mom kind of loved that my mother picked me up after the backer prom and it was i was so embarrassed because everyone else got into a limo and went to the hamptons i already told you that's a that's a chop for me that, that would not be happening but that's because i know what them little children be doing that's a chop that's a big chop now, if y'all want to do a little after party in the same city, sure. But you're not leaving they and going. They in the same city too, girl. No, but you're not leaving and going to the Hamptons unsupervised. See, I would be so idea- mad to deprive my kid of that. Like, I would, I, cause I, I, I mean, that would be a memory you would have forever. So I'm not saying no to that. But I probably but- would have lost my virginity. Probably. I mean, the the dad calling your mom begging is crazy. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. Well, maybe he like, was I trying to decide like, that my do. kid's going to go maybe and I'm giving my daughter parents. condoms. No, no, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm saying it's a mutual understanding between, oh, my parents said it's okay. My parents said it's okay. And in an ideal world, if you guys are dating, we know each other. Yeah, but what yeah. I'm saying is you risk the other parent being like, hell no. And now I know that's what you on. Oh, oh, my kid not going to be around your kid. But then that's and fine. Now my kid is like, damn, I can't fucking tell you anything. But they're going to see each other anyway, though. And you went to the and parents. it becomes dramatic. I didn't no, ask I think to it needs to be. I want to know if you're telling me I'm losing my virginity to John. Are John's parents okay with that? Yeah. Oh, really? Because I'm going to call him and check. Oh, okay, wait, what wait, wait, no, 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 Get locked up for public indecency and do it in the park like everybody else. <laughs> See, uh, I wouldn't want to get locked up for public indecency. Well, if that's the route they want to take, but I'm not getting mixed up if I already know that someone else is uncomfortable with you doing it and now you're in their house doing it. What if you I get caught then what? I just my credit card and be like, maybe you should just get a room. Oh, hell no. You can't facilitate oh it that, that deeply. You can't facilitate it that deeply. Yeah, but, but then I also, where are they going to go? Like, oh, right. my God. They're going to go in the park and suck dick, and then someone oh might God. go to jail. I sucked a lot of dick in the park, and I was oh God. fine. God willing. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait for my two baby boys who are going to be angels sent from heaven. Mm. And they're not going to do nothing. 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 Just but like also, you remember, nothing. just like that with... um the boy, the son, and the white girl who's all over the sun, and she was like, oh, hated that. Oh, oh, oh. Not you in my closet, trying on my bags, taking pictures for Instagram. <laughs> Get the fuck out of my house now. Ah, oh, that was too good. Oh. That was too good. That was too, too good. Mm-mm-mm. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, that went a lot of places, but yeah, it's been making me think a lot. I mean, Again, it was one day, and my boyfriend and I were like, oh, wow, that's a lot. It's a lot. Children, they just talk and have needs <laughs> all day. Mm-hmm. It doesn't stop. So, yeah, some good old living, breathing birth control has been in Correct. the building, and I am popping my pills. Pop them pills. Oh, I thought you were going to say <laughs> popping my Who oh, no. knows? No. He was, I was like trying to kiss and he was like, no, stop. She's here. He's like, kiss it. Kiss it. You're trying to kiss in front of her? Yeah. What the hell? Well, people say you're supposed to kiss in front of your, you're supposed to show affection in front of like your kids. But not like make out. Not make no, out. Not making but like a little out. hug, a little peck. People should, they should, kids should see like loving stuff like that. And she, you know? Know she oh goes to school and she's like, I saw my auntie doing this. You want to try it? <laughs> Wait, oh God. 
She sees it on anything, on everything. Uh, yeah, my kids will be watching Sesame Street till they're in middle school. That's what I'm um, saying. I'm like, we just gotta hide everything, hide it all. Yeah. Now I and understand the um, holding hands. The Amish. I get the Amish. Well, Kimberly Nicole Foster, uh, she's pretty active on Clubhouse and also on Twitter. She made a tweet and it said, as a millennial, we got a ton of quote unquote, pregnancy is the worst thing that can happen, messaging. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're 35 with no kids. Oh, <laughs> I thought that oh was interesting. God. Is that I think tea? there's a lot of levels to that, but. I think that's T. Maybe. Like they're not, they never made it seem like it was like fun. They just made it seem like you have to be very, very ready. Yeah. And it's going to you change know? your whole life. Everything mm -hmm. fun and amazing about your life is done. I think that's accurate. And I think you should hold off as long as you can. <laughs> I'm, hitting, I'm trying to hit these just old, right on the geriatric pregnancy. Baby. What'd you say? And then we're going to be making these bo boiled egg babies. <laughs> Fine. Fine by me. <laughs> Fine by me. I want to be nice and patient, have great health insurance and money. And then we can talk. These kids are expensive. This little girl was like, oh, I want a pizza. I want this. I want that. Didn't eat shit. Then she was like, I want a donut. To go to the well, donut you're spoiling shop. her. And no. she, like, she was like, oh, I don't want these donuts. And I was like, yeah. but you said you wanted a donut. <laughs> no, I don't want a donut anymore. Okay, we get mm -mm. in the car. Wait, we just passed Dunkin' Donuts. I said, you're not going to <laughs> I bet she don't do that with her mom. She like, I know no, she play. does. She was over here like, well, my mom, we go to Starbucks and I get that at a Frappuccino. I said, we not going to Starbucks. I was like, we're not doing any of that. But I'm like, now I see why our parents were tripping when you was throwing away food and doing mm -hmm. all types of shit. Cause it's like, they just, just spend money and just don't even care. Don't even care, child. Oh. Um, it's a solo. So can we just talk about random stuff? Yeah, did you have something else, Shade? I was going to go into our black girl doing shit, if that's all right with you all. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, our good sis, Shakari Richardson. Yes. Yes. I was the queen in the world. Excited. Yes. She, she beat the Jamaicans. Made history. <laughs> Which is so exciting to see her come back from everything she went through. Was it just last year? I think so. If not the year Was prior. Was it? The last two years. Maybe the year prior. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's super talented. She said this quote that I wish I pulled up. But um, she said, like, the world has treated her well and the world has not treated her so well. And she's mm -hmm. just kind of, like, living. And I think that... You know, in some ways, maybe everything happens for a reason. I hate that what happened to her happened to her, but to see her come back like this and have such a huge accomplishment is amazing and just speaks to how black people are perseverant. And she, that didn't stop her from, like, pursuing her goals. And I just love that for her. And she looked beautiful and just, I love it. Yeah, I love it was it. super beautiful. So Great had redemption to story. Example of, like, people mm -hmm. are human. But just because you somebody said something like, our crowns may tilt, but they never fall or some, something like that. Or they could fall, they could pick mm -hmm. the back up, whatever. Um, and it was also dope to right. see all those other women celebrating her, all those other black women specifically coming to hug her afterwards. Oh, it was so beautiful. Like, that really was amazing. She grow. really did that. Ugh, oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Proud. <laughs> Um, I don't know if anyone's hotline is blinging. No. I'm trying to go to Fire Island and we're organizing with like 20 people. That's about it. Oh, Jesus. And I just said, take me out of the chat. <laughs> <laughs> mute the chat. Just mute it. Mute it. Mute up. I was like, get somebody else to do it. I don't want to <laughs> organize anymore. I feel like we kind of did a lot for our group chat. So does anybody have a what would you do? We did a lot. Our group chat meets. No, I have reply. To say. Don't have a what would you do? Yeah, we Make have sure you one send in us. the Geneva. 
Oh, there's one in the Geneva? Oh. What, one of you guys can find it while I say this thing. Um, okay. I watched an interview with um, Bazoma. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And in the interview, she was talking about how with one of her pregnancies, um, the doctor turned to her husband and was like, the baby or your wife? And he picked his wife. And she was like pissed off about it. Wait, what? Wait, she the interview. She was pissed off. I thought she, she was upset with him that he chose her, her, and not the baby. Oh, I have seen that clip everywhere, but I didn't actually watch it. Why was she upset? Oh, well, here, I'll just play the um, play a clip. Bed and the blood pressure is going up, and I'm delirious. And the doctor says, you know, there's only one choice here: you save her. Or you save the baby. Which one is it? And Peter says, we'll save my wife. And I was pissed. Because, again, the whatever that thing is that clicked in my head that said protect the life that is coming first. I was like, no, you should have chosen that one. I've already lived. I've already lived. You should have chosen her. You said that to me? Yes. Yes. It was the beginning of the some of the big fractures in our relationship. I thought that was very really interesting because for me, the choice is very clear. I, Save I feel me. Like, I feel like this interview, though, there it's very layered because I've seen I've seen um, bits and pieces and in, in people's little like think piece writings that she talks mm -hmm. a lot about, like this culture of working really hard, and she believes that that caused her to have issues in her marriage. I don't know if she's still married. Um, I don't think so. I think it, she also alludes to it, like causing her to lose her child. So mm. I think she has a lot, a lot yeah. going on. Less about her and just about the situation. In of, yeah. I really cannot say. I have no idea. I'm so sorry. I was looking you know, for the what would you do? I don't know what like a is happening. Condition. What was that? <laughs> She was going to die, and her husband chose her instead of the baby. And she said she was like, "Save your wife it. or save the baby." Oh, what would you want your partner shit. to do? I like thinking about scenarios because, yeah, very dark, but sure. Fuck. Yeah, but real life. I think I you might not be them. in a state to talk. I think I want to be safe. Oh, you mean with your partner, not just like in life. Yeah, no, I no, think no. I want to be saved and we can try again and hopefully do it yes, together. Yes, yes. I thought you were like, I just like asking my friends. You would, would want to be saved, right, Glenn? I think I want to be saved and then we try again or we have to adopt. Yeah. Same. So that we can like go on the parenthood journey together. We probably will be in, we would be in mourning yeah. forever. And it, it's a very right, difficult decision. But then also... She's like, I've already lived, but then this person, this kid, well, the kid never knew, would never know the mom, but then the kid grows up with no mom. There's just, right. The dad the might always like, be in a state, state of grief over losing the wife. Right. There's just a lot. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm going yeah, to see. I have, I have no. All those things, but then all the other sides of it too, right? So I, it's hard. It's hard for me to say, but. I guess that's like a makeshift. What would you do? I do want to get to the Geneva one, no, but it is a little bit longer. So I feel like we should come back to it next week. Um, but oh, okay. everyone join our Geneva. It should yeah. be in our link tree. And we have a good time. We we shoot the shit on shows and real life. What would you do situations? So better get on in there. And Chelsea, do you want to take us out? Yeah. Um, I just also have to say, because I feel like that was kind of rushed. Um, that's obviously a very sensitive situation and probably tough for anyone who has been in it. But yeah, we've definitely had that conversation. Um, okay. Thanks for listening. This is Black Girls Texting. We are Black Girls Texting on every platform. Bye. Bye-bye.